As SpaceX's Starship reaches its sixth test flight and prepares to conclude a remarkable year in 2024, it's an opportune moment to explore the questions surrounding NASA's lunar lander variant and its potential role in the United States' first moon return missions in over half a century. Not disappointing the space community, NASA and SpaceX recently unveiled stunning new renderings which could be considered the final version of the HLS Starship for the monumental lunar mission scheduled for late 2026. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starship will be used to land astronauts on the lunar surface on NASA's Artemis III mission, which will put the first humans on the moon since 1972. That's the message SpaceX shared alongside stunning new images of the human landing system Starship on its X account. NASA also provided an update on the Artemis mission, revealing captivating concept art of the lunar landing process. Their post stated, How will we carry astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon and back? We're working with industry partners to develop these human landing systems. Check out this new concept art depicting NASA Orion docking with SpaceX's Starship and landing on the moon. These stunning new visuals of HLS Starship showcased by both SpaceX and NASA were prominently featured in the opening moments of SpaceX's Flight 6 livestream, further fueling excitement for the Artemis mission. The newly released renderings illustrate the various steps and operations that SpaceX's reusable Starship spacecraft will undertake as part of NASA's Artemis III mission, currently scheduled no earlier than 2026. According to the mission architecture, a version of Starship will dock in lunar orbit with NASA's Orion spacecraft. The Artemis astronauts will transfer from the Orion capsule into the HLS vehicle. From there, Starship will descend to the lunar surface, enabling humans to set foot on our moon for the first time since 1972. In this series of images, the HLS version of Starship, designed specifically for NASA's Artemis program, appears strikingly different, featuring a sleek white exterior in contrast to the iconic stainless steel of the standard Starship. The illustrations depict the critical docking process between the HLS and Orion in lunar orbit. This pivotal transfer allows Artemis III astronauts to prep for their historic descent to the moon's surface. One key technical element highlighted in the images is the orbital refueling process. Two starships are shown docking belly to belly to transfer fuel from one to the other. This process is essential for each mission as the HLS will require a substantial amount of fuel to escape Earth's gravity, carry heavy equipment, and execute a safe lunar landing. SpaceX has already tested this fuel transfer technology in its third integrated flight test of Starship, albeit with a different configuration. Notably, the HLS design features a significantly increased number of windows compared to the four standard windows of the regular Starship. This enhancement gives better visibility for the crew during descent and lunar exploration while also creating a more open environment that can help reduce psychological stress during extended periods in the confined spacecraft. The design also eliminates the aerodynamic control fins found on the standard Starship as they are unnecessary in the moon's airless environment. This was highlighted by Elon in a tweet on X saying, Special version of Starship, delete heat shield and flaps add landing legs. This could, of course, only be used between translunar orbit and the lunar surface given no heat shield or flaps. Additionally, the HLS Starship is equipped with strategically placed auxiliary thrusters enabling precise control during lunar landings. High-powered lighting systems have also been installed to aid operations in the moon's harsh lighting conditions, where deep shadows or extreme contrasts between light and dark regions can pose challenges. One particularly striking rendering showcases two astronauts in Axiom's Space Next Generation spacesuits using an elevator to descend to the moon's surface. This elevator, designed specifically for HLS, ensures the crew can move safely from the spacecraft to the moon's surface, a pretty impressive upgrade from the manual ladders used during the Apollo missions. Notably, astronauts Peggy Whitson of Axiom Space and Doug Wheelock of NASA tested this system in June. Wearing Axiom suits, they conducted trials using an HLS mock-up at SpaceX's headquarters in California. The tests confirmed several critical aspects of the HLS design. The airlock sizing configuration can accommodate astronauts in full suits comfortably. The floor layout and working surfaces are optimized for extravehicular activities. The elevator operates smoothly under the weight of fully suited astronauts. Interfaces and controls are well positioned and remain accessible even while wearing space gloves. These developments underscore the meticulous preparation SpaceX and NASA have as they aim for Artemis' target launch date. 
Their discreet approach to testing is strategic given the competitive lunar ambitions of countries like China, which seek to dominate the moon's south pole, a region rich in water resources, critical for research. Another rendering illustrates the HLS Starship firing two of its six Raptor engines during a braking burn as it approaches the moon. This flexibility in engine management highlights Starship's adaptability in lunar conditions where there is no atmosphere and gravity is just one-sixth of the Earth's. For landing, Starship may not need to engage all three Raptors, further optimizing fuel use and control. The rendered images reflect the advanced development of the mission components, particularly for Starship. It's likely the production of this spacecraft is progressing at SpaceX's Star Factory, where cutting-edge designs and possibly luxurious interiors are taking shape. Earlier in November, NASA officials confirmed that SpaceX was making excellent progress with life support testing inside a nose cone mock-up at their production site. Speculations about the nose cone's interior design have also sparked curiosity, promising a blend of functionality and modernity that makes this next phase of space exploration even more exciting. Another piece of news related to the lunar lander, highlighting the growing certainty and accelerated progress of the HLS Starship, is a transport agreement for delivering Artemis rover to the moon. This rover is being developed for NASA's use on future missions. The Colorado company announced November 21st that it signed an agreement for SpaceX to use Starship to transport the Lunar's Outpost Eagle rover to the moon. The companies did not disclose the schedule for the launch or other terms of the deal. Lunar Outpost is one of three companies that got NASA contracts in April for the first phase of the Lunar Terrain Vehicle LTV program to support the development of a rover that can be used for future Artemis missions. Each company got a one-year contract to mature the design of their rovers through a preliminary design review, and the agency will later select at least one of the companies to develop the rover. The LTV program is structured as a services contract with the companies responsible for delivering the rover to the moon. Those companies will then be free to use those rovers commercially when not needed by NASA. Justin Cyrus, CEO of Lunar Outpost, said in an interview that the company selected SpaceX after getting great responses from several companies. The reason we chose Starship is their technological maturation, the pace at which they move, and the quality of that organization, he said. It's a vehicle that we think will be able to provide reliable landing on the moon's surface, and we know they can get it done in the timelines we need. Lunar Outpost designed the rover to be compatible with as many potential landing systems as possible, though he did not yet disclose other vehicles his company considered alongside Starship. We need this vehicle to be compatible with multiple different lander providers, so that way we have the optionality, that way we have the flexibility, and we can evaluate technical progress over time just to make sure we can de-risk our commercial case. Lunar Outpost is leading a team that includes Lidos, MDA Space, Goodyear, and GM, which is working on the rover. Lidos replaced Lockheed Martin in September as one of the partners on the Lunar Dawn team after Lunar Outpost was not able to work out an agreement on that company's role in the project. The team has been busy refining the design of the rover, including having NASA astronauts recently drive a prototype of the rover for human factors testing. We learn what the astronauts really like and what we can improve upon, Cypress said. The first phase of the contract will conclude in about six months with a PDR. NASA will then request proposals from Lunar Outpost and the other two awardees, Intuitive Machines and Venturi Astrolab, for the next phase to develop the rover and purchase services. NASA officials have stated that budget limitations mean they are likely to pick only one company for that phase, although Cyrus said he and others in the industry are encouraging NASA to pick multiple companies to give redundancy as the agency has done in other service programs like the HLS. NASA should pick two. Dissimilar redundancy for something like this is critical. I think that's the right choice, he said. Lunar Outpost announced November 13 that it raised a Series A round, the size of which Cyrus said the company would not disclose for competitive reasons. That funding, he said, will go toward work on the Lunar Outpost Eagle. The company, he added, plans to continue work on the rover even if not selected for the next phase of NASA's LTV program, citing commercial interest from potential customers. This allows us to accelerate those plans pretty drastically, he said of the funding, so no matter what, we're going to be flying this vehicle on Starship. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.